Yeah, I mean, it's not the way, didn't go the way we wanted it to go. Um, players played hard. You know, now they're going to have to strengthen the resolve, you know. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Dennis Fithian with this uh, afternoon live. Welcome in TMBR, the Maze and Blue Review. As we get ready to get things underway here on this uh, YouTube live on this November the 1st. And uh, I do want to thank uh, Brad Galley over there at Channel 7. That was Jim Harbaugh after the game on Saturday up in East Lansing talking about uh, strengthening their resolve moving forward. We'll get to that. We'll look back at the game and why Michigan uh, ended up losing uh, to Michigan State up there in East Lansing when things were looking so good at different times for the uh, Wolverines. Also, a couple features here that I, I hope to get to daily. One is uh, the Michigan Recruiting Spotlight and also the Memorabilia Minute. We'll bring you guests. And then uh, also when um, I get about halfway through the show or, or towards the end, I will go to the um, – Maize and Blue Review website, and I will look on the uh, the boards, and I will check to see uh, what's hot and what Michigan fans are saying there. So you can get your feedback in uh, via the uh, the message boards there on Rivals, which we are are, are kicking off here, first day of coverage. I wish it was uh, happening under different circumstances. That is, I wish we were sitting here talking about uh, on launch day, Michigan. Uh, being 8-0 and waiting for the college football playoff uh, rankings to come out and, you know, dreaming of, uh, you know, all the things that you would dream of, uh, dreaming of things that, you know, and it didn't happen to me. I try to take each week and put it in context and and each game, and sometimes that's, uh, that's easier said than done. This week is one of those things, uh, which we'll get to uh, all of that. But when I got to, oh, what was it? Uh, it was the bye week after Nebraska. You know, Michigan had, uh, you know, the, the thrilling game there at Lincoln. And then, uh, all right, you know, it was the bye week. And I remember seeing a post of, of somebody saying, you know, I hate bye weeks. And I was like, you know what? I'm really enjoying this bye week. You know, Michigan was undefeated. And I had feelings that about Michigan football that I hadn't had um, in a while. And a lot of it was, uh, you know, the stuff that I'm feeling right now, all the you know, the coaching and disaster and impending doom, the sky is falling and things that you have to deal with uh, over the years after a Michigan loss or a Michigan season or a Michigan bowl game or a Michigan Ohio state game. Uh, those all came flooding back this weekend, but during the bye week, it was, uh, it was, it was so much fun. It wasn't, it wasn't a relief. It was, uh, it was, it was just great feeling, you know, great vibe, all of those uh, kind of things to just sit back and say, you know what? Uh, it's fun talking about the coaching staff, head coach, uh, young staff. It was uh, great. Take either side of the ball, all three position, whatever you wanted to do, all three phases of the game. Uh, everybody was playing. If not, uh, well, you know, you could, uh, you know, Michigan was undefeated. <laughs> it was Things were looking good. And they had a Northwestern team in front of them. But then we knew the second half of the season, or you want to call them tougher games, landmines, whatever else. And one of them was going to be, up in East Lansing from what we had seen from uh, Michigan state. I didn't know how good Michigan state was going to be. And you know what? They got a great running back. They, there's no doubting of that right now. There's no uh, going around uh, Kenneth Walker, the third and what he was able to do. So uh, the first thing that I'll, I'll tackle is uh, I'll answer the question why I thought Michigan lost the game. And it's KW five, Kenneth Walker, the the third, the fourth, the fifth touchdown. I mean, you can have a guy make some plays and get some yards after contact and, and have a, a 27 yard touchdown run. But when it starts to get, you know, here's a 60 and, and then too many broken tackles and then too many fourth and ones that the, uh, the touchdowns and the two point conversions clearly it was too much to take and, and those big plays and the big plays in this one, and it all started towards the end of the, the first quarter, uh, Michigan state 
uh, before they got into the second quarter, they went with some tempo and they got Michigan running off the field. And I was like, okay, you know, that's going to happen sometimes. But that was a uh, foreshadowing of what was going to happen and going to be a problem for Michigan all game long. If they weren't getting penalized for having people running off the field, they were running around, not in position while, you know, state had scouted them. And that was something that they were going to spring on them. And it worked very effectively, obviously, you know, state got that, that touchdown run the first play of the second quarter. And then when they, um, they got another touchdown there in the, in the second quarter, remember when they had the fourth and one, they had a, a 40 yard floater over the middle. And then they're down to like the five yard line, Michigan. Uh, they had players running all uh, out and, and Walker went around and scored. They didn't call that one for too many men on the field uh, for Michigan there, but they only had like, I don't know, eight guys and, you know, Walker went around and of course they, uh, they didn't have to accept that penalty. So it, it, it was happening all the way through and, uh, you know, you, you, you credit the opponent and then you wonder if Michigan at half, how much they did talk about that. And I know Jim Harbaugh did speak just moments ago and uh, we've had some of that audio. I, I also see that um, uh, some of the writers were uh, live tweeting during the news conference, Angelique Shingell is from the Detroit news. She uh, asked about the um, second fumble. Here's one. Also, uh, she asked about uh, Michigan being in position and I'll see if I can find that. Uh, I thought I had it right in front of me here, but I don't ask Harbaugh about the fumble. We'll get to that one. And uh, all right. It's coming in from somewhere else, maybe. But, um, yeah, that, that was an issue. Uh, yards after contact, big plays. And then Michigan, really, uh, they were in fabulous position, thinking about, um, you know, being up 16 points in the third quarter. And all the plays that Michigan State had to make, get the touchdowns and the two-point conversions uh, to put themselves in position to tie that game and then ultimately take the lead. You know, Michigan's defense, the – one of the things for me, and you know, that's going to happen. You're going to have an opponent that sits on some kind of tendency and springs it on you. And you're not a uh, quick to be able to make the adjustment. It was a, it was a factor for sure. How big it was. A, it was a huge factor to me talking about the tempo, but then it got to just repeated play after repeated big play by Michigan state that they had to just keep making. And then they also were making plays that were getting reviewed a lot. And then they just kept uh, getting the, uh, the break there. And, and, you know what? If it wasn't for the um, was it the second review? Because the first one was the uh, Kenneth Walker bobble. Uh, the second one was the targeting on Haskins. The third one was the Ajabo Hutchinson, the Ajabo strip, and the Hutchinson uh, touchdown. You know, if uh, if that one is called to the standard that it's supposed to be called, like uh, the Kenneth Walker touchdown, where it looked like you could make a case that you know maybe it was just starting to move before he hit the plane of the goal. You can make that case. You know what? There was it, it wasn't irrefutable video evidence. And you know what? When uh, the targeting call on Haskins, however you believe about guys getting thrown out or what, you know, Haskins had not, he wasn't a, a, a defenseless player at that point. He was still moving forward a little bit. And the player did come in and, and, and got him as he was going down with his shoulder. And it was to the, to the helmet and neck. Uh, area, but he w- he wasn't a defenseless player at that point. I thought that was a, a good call and a good review. But also on the on the strip and the touchdown, like it was the call on the field. It, it was too close. I mean, you can't tell me for sure that he had that ball. In fact, it looked like the ball started to move before that shin went down. And to you know to add to the matters there, because it is tough if you're a Michigan fan to try to be uh, objective and, and we all see things a little bit differently. Uh, we know that, but the thing to me is that you got the guys on the call and here's the, the quote from Joel Klatt, not seeing the look of clear and obvious. And then they bring in Mike Pereira who says this one that is so close. What did they rule on the field based on the fact that they ruled fumble on the field, Joel, I don't think they can change this. Well, they did change it. So when you have one that's taken from you right there and Michigan's going to go up and uh, have 27 points at the half, and then 
the ensuing video re- replays, and I, I think like the one that was picked up off the field and, and, and went, I, I thought that was a, the, the correct call. And the other ones, I think that went Michigan state's way on the video review went the right way too, but they clearly got that one wrong, which was a huge play. It was a seven touchdown or a seven point play six for sure. Seven. Let's make it seven. You know, when you're kicking right there from uh, in Moody's automatic on extra points. So, you know, that part with the, with the calls is, um, uh, the video review, I mean that's what we've seen it in all sports. This isn't the fir- isn't the first time, and you have to overcome that. And then late in the game, on the second from last um, drive that Michigan has on offense, when Cornelius Johnson, the the defender, has his arm draped around him, now, that should have been a defensive pass interference. I mean, clearly, those are the two calls you know that I'm going to go to. But yeah, have we seen missed calls and a defensive pass interference late in a game? The ref wants to keep his you know, uh, flag in his pocket, you know, that kind of thing. We've seen it and we've seen botched reviews, but all of the other reviews, I think there were seven reviews and they all went Michigan State's way. I mean, come on. So to, to make it clear and concise, when we tell people, why did you think Michigan lost the game? The first thing that I say is Kenneth Walker. Michigan had him hemmed in a few times and it was yards after contact. And yeah, I, like it's the obvious thing. The guy scored five touchdowns. And when do you say, well, it was the offense, you know, having to settle for field goals. I've seen a little bit of that. So, you know, the offense has their share. Sure. You know, Blake Corum, uh, Michigan's uh, second offensive possession of the game. They're up already seven to nothing. But, you know, Corum on that third down has that ball, you know, hit him right in, in the two. He probably would have gone in for a touchdown there. Could have. It looked like it. You could certainly make the case 14 nothing. You know, that's a big play. Michigan flinched to their tight end on another uh, fourth down run before when they um, had the fake. They had a hard time uh, with the execution of the punt. You know, there's another one. Uh, Andrew Anthony, a star is born in this game from what he did with that uh, the first touchdown, second touchdown, and the catches that he was making uh, during this game. We saw it right in front of our eyes. It was a great story. The kid from East Lansing. But on Michigan's um, uh, Michigan's other drive there, You go down, let's see which one it was, just so uh, we can get it exact. It was um, Michigan's third offensive possession. You know, they that was after Dax Hill tipped it. Mike Morris gets the interception. Michigan goes down. They give it to Cornelius Johnson on a reverse. He's got it down to the five for a first down, and they call Andrew Anthony for a hold. That was a very nitpicky hold, if you go back, by, by anybody's standard. And did he turn them? Did he have his hands? I didn't even see any of that. It looked more, trying to be objective, it looked more to me like that was defensive holding than, than holding on, uh, on number one for the Wolverines. So, I don't know. So, there's three calls. And I know, I know there's other ones. People taking pictures. And it, it looked a lot like Morris was being held. And, 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 you know, I saw that live when I was watching the game. I saw a few of those. You do have to overcome. Uh, those things, but Michigan having their opportunities and, and being up 16 points and touchdowns and two point conversions, fourth downs that are being you know thrown over their head or down to the goal line, too many of those. And then if you really want to argue, well, was it more offense or was it more defense? You know, you get to a point where there's um, over five minutes to go in the game, and then there's uh, just a little bit over four, and Michigan's on their own 32. Is after you know state had taken the lead, but there's still I think it was four sixteen to go. Michigan decides to go for it with four sixteen to go on their own thirty two yard line with three timeouts. So almost in any other situation that you're sitting there, you'd say, "Hey, kick the ball, play defense." You don't even have to stop them necessarily. You know, uh, three straight times they could get a first down, and then you could still you know, get the ball back. You have three timeouts. You're on your own 32 yard line. But uh, Jim Harbaugh and the staff had had seen enough of Kenneth Walker where they didn't think they could stop him. They didn't think that they could get Michigan state with over four minutes to go and three timeouts uh, stopped before the 50 to get the ball back to try to make uh, one more push downfield. Now they got the first down that ends up not being the, you know, talked about as much, but uh, you go back, you're like, whoa, look at this. 
it was telling to me. You know, the defense, whether you want to, they were just ga- uh, gassed. Uh, they'd given up the long touch on uh, another long touchdown to Kenneth Walker on the previous one, and you know Harbaugh said that's enough. So yeah, you know the uh, the offense had to settle for some field goals, but the defense at the end was uh, so worn out that they didn't want him back out on the field. So I would say in the end, it was a uh, defense. Here's uh, some feedback coming in uh, right off the, uh, the bat. Let's put it up here. Uh, here's hail TVV. Welcome to rivals. We also be covering basketball comes basketball season. Well, basketball season starts what uh, Friday as uh, isn't there a, uh, a, was it a scrimmage or a game or it just doesn't count towards the standings uh, at Wayne State? I don't know if that game's going to be on TV. The answer is 100% yes. Now look, now I grew up in the 70s watching Michigan football. Bo Schembechler. I didn't go to Michigan, but I loved watching Michigan football, and it's always been number one to me. Football. Michigan football. I love covering it. When I got out of uh, a college, I went to work at a radio station in Ann Arbor and got a chance to to cover Michigan. It was uh, it was a dream come true. And, and talking about Michigan football is still I, I like watching Michigan play football. The second best thing is talking about Michigan and games that they played. But you know, basketball is my favorite sport to play. And Tim McCormick and the gang in the early 80s when they had an NIT run, that was uh, something to me that I took notice of, and they ended up being my favorite basketball team, Michigan football, Michigan basketball, later Michigan hockey, and then much later Michigan baseball. I love uh, I love all four of those sports, and I love college and pro, but I love Michigan football, basketball, hockey, and baseball. So I'm in a really good spot. Actually, like a lot of the Olympic sports as well. Softball is great. Can go on and on. Uh, gymnastics, uh, field hockey. I mean, it's great. It's it's great. Uh, you like competition. I'm right down the road here, in the Peach Mountains of uh, Peach Mountain. It's located in Dexter, Michigan. It's uh, it's a it's a short trip down to see some competition and see the maize and blue. So yeah, a long answer to one simple question is I can't wait to talk basketball. And last year, and a lot of it had to do with the the pandemic and the situation, I was able to go back to Ann Arbor where I started after being in Detroit for 14 years and and help out at the radio station that I started at for a year. And it happened uh, during, of course, the football season, which was a a disaster. But basketball season was anything but. And it was uh, was glorious. Last year's basketball season – was one of the, the the great seasons and most memorable seasons uh, ever. I don't say that lightly. And I know they didn't go to the Final Four championship game, but winning the Big Ten, uh, the team coming together, uh, fabulous doing what they did. They kept me uh, so entertained. I love that team. And, you know, I can't get enough of talking about them. You know, that's the way I felt about Michigan football during the bye week. The feelings, like it felt like talking about Michigan basketball because Michigan basketball, so you could say anything. Talk about, you could just pull a player out of the, a hat. Oh, Ron Wagner, here's 10 minutes. I'll talk about him. Juwan Howard? And talk about Howard Isley? I mean, I, you could go anywhere. And, and football was getting that way. And that's the part where when I get to the, uh, so I answer the question why Michigan lost. Easy answer, Kenneth Walker the third. Tempo. And I, I would also put the uh, the turnover from McCarthy uh, in there as well. Uh, a fourth down place, big place. That's as quick as I can do it. But is the, is the season over for Michigan? And, and the answer to that here on November 1st is, yes, it feels like it. It feels like the season's over. All those good feelings, and I know it's not. They've got four games to play, and a lot of what happens in these four games is going to uh, determine just you know how we're going to end up feeling about uh, the the team, bowl game, Ohio State game. You know they've they've got Indiana uh, a night game this week. 
you know how it goes. If you're like me, everything seems to be lost right now. You're in a bad place. That's how it goes. And uh, I, the only remedy to crawl out of this uh, dark spot is for victories on the field and they don't play till Saturday. So it's going to be a long week. And, uh, and I know the sun's going to rise and I know Michigan has a chance where they can get back and, and play for something. They're not even out of the big 10 East race, but it just feels like it because heading into this season, when I looked at the schedule and I played the game of, you know, win this one, lose that one. What's the most important game. When it came to Michigan State, I told everybody that was listening to me that it was a must-win game. I didn't see any way around it. You can't fall under 500 if you're Jim Harbaugh to Michigan State. You can't go 0-2 against Mel Tucker, who just showed up uh, there in East Lansing. And, and yet they did. And that's exactly the situation that we're sitting in. So I don't know. I, I, I don't see uh, any light at the tunnel. But again... It's, a, it's the it's the Monday after a, a devastating loss. Let's just be honest about it. I mean, I don't have to sit here and I, I know a lot of people like uh, you know pull pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Let's get back out there and start cheering for these guys. Like, all right, maybe, you know, maybe Saturday, maybe Saturday I'll be able to do that. I'm not doing that today. I don't feel like you know I don't have any boots on. I don't feel like doing anything right now, except um, you know crying and whining. So is the season over? Yeah, it feels like it. You know, they've had four games. They got a bowl game. But the problem is, is that when you go 7-0, and you stop and you do start thinking about the what-ifs. And you just want it to continue so much. And you're having such a good time. And you haven't had that kind of good time. You know, I hadn't enjoyed Michigan football last year. The, the opener against Minnesota was great. I was like, man, it's worth the wait. It was awesome. Everybody, But then after that, everything was a disaster. And I didn't have great prospects uh, for this year. But, you know, slowly, week by week, you know, they, they built it back up where you started thinking, wow, you know, look at these guys. And, and that's one of the worst parts about it. Like I just talked about the Michigan defense. You know, Jim Harbaugh conceded that his defense couldn't stop Michigan State. He had to go for it on his own 32 with over four minutes to go and three timeouts. That's how he felt about his defense in that game. I like the defense. I like the players. Hutchinson's a great player. Ajabo hasn't come out of nowhere, but he looks like a star. I like the two defensive tackles. Dax Hill, I thought the corners played pretty well in this game. You know, they, but, but giving up plays, uh, the big plays or the two point conversions, I, you know, not being, and you know what? I liked Mike McDonald up to this point. But when it came down to it in a big game, the 33-year-old didn't have the answers and got out coached. And, and that goes to his head coach, and that goes to the defensive coordinator and anybody else. It's the staff. So that gets us to the other question, how much of this is on Jim Harbaugh? Well, everything comes back to the head coach. Jim Harbaugh was the one inserting the quarterbacks and, and, and playing revolver with the QB. We always knew that was dangerous. And we know that uh, McCarthy could hit the transfer portal and, you know, that McNamara with the free year and him being, a, in effect, a redshirt freshman, he could have three more seasons after this. So playing both of them, you understand it. But you also understand that, I mean, do you want to you win the game that you're in? Or do you want to worry about, you know, pacifying some players or, or you know, you have your plan? And I don't know what happened after the second fumble. You know, Cade was working through something. Cade was in the tent. Cade was this. Cade was that. JJ was this. Same thing. But you know what? There's, a, there's, a, there's reasons that it's never worked almost in the history of college football. You know, doing like the old ball coach, bringing a player in, bringing a quarterback in, this snap, sending him out, sending the other guy in. It just, you got, it's the one position you, you need. You need rhythm. You, you need to have the rest of the team believe in you. And you know what? The, the thing that, that stands out the most to me on the, the whole thing with the, the QB and whatever it ended up coming down to, if, you know, they had to put McCarthy in after his fumble because of McNamara was dealing with something. He did get that blitz that came off the corner at his bell rung, hung in there. 
And then there was another series after that. But the thing is, when you get a guy at the quarterback position, McNamara was having a fantastic game. And every throw was perfect. Yeah, they're really going, throwing behind Blake Corum. Even when they got down there and had to uh, settle for the field goal at the end of the first half, you know, he had he, he, he overshot Anthony. He didn't let Kojo get a play on the ball in the corner of the end zone. So not every pass was perfect, but, you know, he had some crossing routes. And when they went up 16, when he threw that one to Sandra still, and he, he had the pose, the Paul Bunyan pose, it was a money ball. He was clicking. He was cooking. And that's where it comes back to the coach. You say, you know what? You have to decide when you got a guy that's going like that. It, it's like in Hoosiers, Jimmy Chitwood needed to shoot the last shot. Because he'll make it, coach. Cade should have been in there, especially after that fumble, maybe even before that fumble. So, yeah, that's going to fall back onto the head coach. And, uh, and, and what else falls on the head coach? Uh, the tempo issue. Oh, Mike McDonald, you know, Michigan was exposed to that. They couldn't, the guys were standing up. They were running all around. You know, the head coach has got to coordinate all that. I know he gives a lot of responsibility to his coordinators. Didn't work well for him. So the tempo, the quarterback shuffle. And ultimately we're sitting here. You can say, well, look at how much, how many yards the offense put up. And they got screwed on a couple of calls. You know, put that on Harbaugh. Well, it's cumulative as well. Harbaugh's now, oh, three and four against Michigan State. And yeah, you know what? The one came down with the the snap at the very end of the game. Another one, you know, was a rain-soaked, you know, game where he had to, you know, put in his third or fourth string quarterback. And then there's this one. And then there's last year that they weren't prepared for when they were a 20-point favorite. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it has a little bit of the effect in a rivalry game and in a big game where you say, hey, and individually, yeah, it, just this game, tempo, and the quarterback shuffle. But you know what? Y- you had Mark D'Antonio put in the rearview mirror. Mel Tucker comes in, uh, hits the portal, got transfers left and right, and you, know, you can't, you got to win the game. It becomes a, a bottom line situation. But yeah. And like Jim Harbaugh understand this is, I know a lot of Michigan fans like take it easy on Jim Harbaugh. Are you a Michigan guy or not? Like it's not doing any good. Everybody else is ripping them. Well, you don't have to sit and rip them every day. You don't have to rip them every week. But if there's the question that needs to be answered, does Jim Harbaugh deserve a little criticism uh, for his coaching against Michigan state in this game and for the last two years and for his time here, the answer is yes. And he knows that. So it's not piling on. It's just answering a question. And yes, outside of Ann Arbor, and certainly if you're not a Michigan fan, it gets sickening and it's the worst. It is one of the, you know, terrible parts about, uh, about being a fan right now is that, yeah, people are, will attack Jim Harbaugh. And then it becomes one of these where you feel like, I don't want to hear any of this. Stop it. And now even our local guys and even our guys that are supposed to be like the Uber fans are doing it too. deal with it, deal with that you know what? Yeah. He deserves criticism here and you don't have to give it to him, wear him out every day on it, but he knows it and uh, he wears it. You have to wear it. You got to put on those big boy khakis and and take it. And you know, it, it, it happens people when you have a post game, like he had up in East Lansing, you know, I'm getting texts. Oh, Jim looked like he was like, come on. But he's got to take some uh, some criticism. All right, let's get some uh, let's, let's get some let's get some audio in here, and let's the the first, and we'll have the recruiting Michigan recruiting spotlight coming up. I'll also have the memorabilia minute that I'm going to want to get to. Uh, you know, here's somebody. I said a star was born. Uh, Andrew Anthony. Had the 93-yard lightning bolt. And then, you know, the kids from Eastland. It's the greatest story ever. But then he's coming back. He's the second series. Yeah, here he is catching another ball. Here he is with another touchdown. He almost had three. What a spectacular game for uh, from Andrell Anthony. Here's uh, what he had to say just moments ago 
in Ann Arbor. This is courtesy of Angelique Shingelis and the Detroit News Twitter feed. Here's Anthony. Well, first to say, I mean, it's kind of like, it was exciting, I was stuff like that, but I mean, like, being able to be put in position by like, coaches stuff like that, and players even really getting paid, getting opportunities, stuff like that, I mean, it meant, like, the world to me, just, like, the coaches, and yeah, I'm a true freshman, and stuff like that, and they really, like, believe in me, that meant a lot to me. Um, as far as... Really, just like uh, my teammates, stuff like that. Like, just the trust, like the ball we have, it just like it, it means like the world to me. All right, a star is born. That was a great. That was a great showing by the kid. It would have been great, of course. Uh, it'd be a lot different. We're sitting here talking about a win. We do know that, <laughs> but that's different. Let's see here. Jim Harbaugh spoke uh, moments ago in his. Uh, Monday news conference as well. And uh, our own Josh Henschke, the uh, the publisher of TMBR, was uh, on site, and he has sent me this. Here's Jim Harbaugh taking to the podium moments ago down uh, yeah, in Ann Arbor. Dave, Dave Abloff throwing it to him. Let's go. Larry Lage. Jim, defensively, how do you clean up some of those substitution issues where you guys are having trouble getting guys on the field? Uh, yeah, we're uh, something we got to work on, we got to fix, um, especially when they're not substituting and going fast. It's not the time for us to substitute. On the right here, Ryan. Jim, what's the status of Donovan Edwards? Um, he's working through something right now. Left Isaiah. I know you haven't had practices of yet, but how, how have you seen your guys kind of act in the aftermath of this, and how do you keep it from one loss turning into two? Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen the you know the team uh, for a long time now. Um, you know the, the way they respond, um, and whether it's a, a setback or or chatter, you know, um, so. I know how they're going to respond. Been around, uh, you know, several of them. Uh, come back today for meetings, but uh, very confident that the team will respond like like they did, um, which is uh, come back with more resolve, more determined to prepare and uh, get ready for our next ball game. All right, a little bit from Jim Harbaugh there. Since I just sat here, and if you've been listening, and and I thought that the the biggest issue, one of the biggest issues, uh, of course, Kenneth Walker and yards after contact, but it played into the Michigan defense not being prepared for the uh, the personnel switches out, and they got caught uh, more than once, flagged once, another one when the touchdown was going in, and then they were out of position. That that's a legitimate question for sure. Something we got to work on. I'd like a little bit more. And so if I was at that news conference, I would have that in my back pocket and say, hey, Jim, uh, were, were you guys not ready? Were they, were they doing something a little bit more with the, with the tempo and the, and, the, and, and the hurry up? I don't know. It might be a little bit overboard saying, hey, did you guys practice at all for, for up tempo? Did you, did you just come in? So, I don't know. Like, but I like the response there, the resolve. He said that on Monday. Like, like I said, I, and I think Michigan fans are going to be like this. Uh, you know, it's a dark day today. There's no getting right back up on the horse as a fan and being all excited about the night game against Indiana. That's not going to happen. That might not even happen on Saturday. You know, if, if you want to tell me that you're not going to feel good unless Michigan goes out and plays a heck of a game against Indiana and then goes to Happy Valley and then, you know, takes it to Penn State and then – and uh, you know, gets two games under the belt where you feel like, all right, you know, they can go to Maryland and win that, and win that one, and then they might have something for Ohio State. You might be coming around by then, but not today. But Harbaugh has to come around, and so do the players. I mean, that's why they get paid the big bucks. Let's see if I've got more. Uh, well, I have to toggle a little bit. Let's just see. I lost my spot. Maybe I did. Yes, I did. Can I move it? All right, well, that's what we had from uh, from Jim Harbaugh. I'll let that run a little bit, 
and let's see if I can get back to the spot in about five minutes. All right, uh, two features to get to. One is the memorabilia minute, and uh, the other is uh, the Michigan recruiting spotlight. And for the memorabilia minute, I've got so much, uh, so many things here memorabilia wise in the Peach Mountain Studios. I thought, well. Why not talk about them for one minute? It could be of some interest to the folks out there. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see over my shoulder here in a, a, a case. And up top here, that is a, a Heisman Trophy. And the three players, you can see that they are wearing maize and blue. You've got Tom Harmon, Desmond Howard, and Charles Woodson. Which Charles Woodson, it was a great moment with Woodson being on the field before the game waving that flag on Fox. That was really cool. But this was given to me shortly after the 97 season, and the uh, the workmanship is fantastic. It is held up. Like, if you if I polish this thing up and and had it, something you'd say, wow, this thing looks like it's brand new. Whoever put this together and gave this to me, thank you. I, it's uh, it's a great piece of memorabilia. It's been in, uh, in multiple on-air studios, and I wouldn't sell it for a mil. I'd sell it for a mil. I wouldn't sell it for... I don't know. I wouldn't sell it for 500 bucks. You're going to have to get up into the thousands before I would think about moving on for that one. Once you get to about a thousand, I think I could start building my own maybe and pocket half the cash or maybe 90% of it. So that's the uh, memorabilia minute. My, I, I went with the big piece right off the bat, the Heisman trophy honoring Michigan's winners with the figurines, the write-ups, the maze velvet or, or the blue velvet, in the background and the, the little write-ups that have maze around them, it all enclosed in the case. That eight by eleven. What do we got about the you know twelve by fifteen case? That's the memorabilia minute. Now for the Michigan recruiting spotlight. Let's see where Harbaugh's at here. If we had this thing running, it doesn't look like it's still running. Let's see. No, it's still running. All right. Um, the recruiting spotlight has Michigan ranked. Uh, by rivals as 17. Uh, they've got 17 commitments and they're ranked 18th overall as we sit right now. Two weeks ago, they had 18 commitments and they were ranked 17th. And then they lost uh, Tayshawn Trent, the four star wide receiver. And now they're ranked uh, 18th with 17 commitments and they're down to three four stars. And they just have the one five star. But a lot of people, when it goes to this game, want to say, well, you know, how's this going to affect recruiting? Uh, and it affects it. Like, um, it's not good. It's not good. I, I don't think if somebody was thinking, you know, I like Michigan State, I like Michigan, and they watch this game, and like, oh, I'm sold on Michigan now. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. I, you know, the winner, you know, gets uh, – there, there's a lot of things that, that happen. The, the victor goes to spoils and all that, and a lot of that when it comes to recruiting, you pick up the phone and you win the game. Hey, you want to join us or what? So uh, uh, it It helps. I think the one thing that, um, and we'll see how it ends up playing out, if Mel Tucker going to LSU, like if Michigan State would have lost that game on Saturday and Michigan State would have, I don't know, lost to uh, Purdue and Ohio State, if they would have lost three games. Down in Baton Rouge today, people weren't going to be sitting around like, man, I can't wait to get Mel Tucker. He just got his teeth kicked in and gave up 500 yards of offense to Michigan. Let's go, let's go get Tuck. He's coming. Now, I don't think that would have been the the talk. But do I think today in Baton Rouge, Mel Tucker went out and beat his rival? He's 2-0 and against Michigan? The last time we, the Tigers, went up and took a coach from uh, East Lansing, his name was Nick Saban. Now we got a guy undefeated sitting there knocking on the door of the college football playoff. What I'm saying here is that, you know how it affects Mel Tucker – while uh, you take the win, if you're Michigan State, and you think about that, this could affect recruiting if he ends up bolting. I think the other part, and a lot of people have talked about that, this aspect, sorry, is the recruiting aspect of the of the portal and just how the portal was taken advantage of by by Mel Tucker, there's going to be a lot of coaches uh, examining it. There's been a lot of like, you know, Florida State also hit the transfer portal pretty hard. And look at them. So it's not just absolutely, you know, just a, a magic elixir. 
you you go to the portal and then you just bring in you know the thirty different guys or however whenever they turned over on the roster and it, it's magic. You got to know who you're picking and the personnel and the, and the coach and putting it all together. It's pretty clear that Tucker is able to put together a team pretty quick. Last year he didn't even know the guys' names uh, because of COVID and practice restrictions, and he came out after looking like a joke against Rutgers and beat Michigan. Now we're here. Look at him. Eight no. But I, I think the thing to remember about the, the Porto, a lot of Michigan fans are like, well, you need, we need to hit the Porto. We need to change admissions. I don't think that's happening. You talk with now, if you're just a, I say just, like I'm just a Michigan fan. Like I didn't go to Michigan, but I talked to people that went to Michigan. And when you ask people that went to Michigan about the admissions and about, um, what this does, it gets back to where you might have to be careful. Michigan grads, they really like that. What is that? The U S news and world report when they, they rank uh, the, the public colleges and, and, and Michigan's routinely in the top five USC, UCLA, Michigan, right up there. If you start, uh, relaxing some of the, uh, the issues when it comes down to admissions early or whatever it comes down to. And, and maybe a, a lot of Michigan people don't like to talk about uh, Xavier worthy, who is, you know, they, they, you know, they blame the outgoing recruiting coordinator Dudek. I think his name was, who ended up going to Mississippi state and they just lay it at his feet. And there's, and, and maybe it is just all on him, but there's also, uh, was there some something admissions wise that you know Michigan just wasn't ready to rubber stamp or something? And my my point here is that this could affect, and, and I don't know how much. It, it, would you be willing if you went to Michigan to say, well, you know, you you relaxed that admissions standards, you might fall, you know, out of the top ten of that report that people love. You talk to you talk to Michigan alums, and they're always talking about, hey, we're the number one or number two or we're top five. When it comes down to that report, they love it. And is it is a devalue your, uh, you know, your diploma or what? You got to ask Michigan alums that way. They have to decide a, a president in uh, working with the athletic director. And then in this case, the football coach, maybe the other, you know, it's not just football. So I don't know. That, that's a, that's a thorny issue, but I, I saw a lot of people today on rivals uh, talking about it and speaking of rivals and starting there today the tmbr the maize and blue review and if you're someone who likes michigan talk and and likes to engage in michigan fans in a community every day well get a board here at the outset on rivals and tmbr and I'm going to go to the, the message board right here. And I posted something on here. I got no replies. Maybe maybe when I click on, somebody will have replied. I say, uh, uh, if you have any topics for me to discuss, then reply here and I'll check it during the show. Why did Michigan come up short? How much of this is on Harbaugh? Is the season over? How will, reflect, uh, how will this affect the recruiting and the Michigan recruiting uh, spotlight along with the memorabilia minute. I've hit all of those, but in the future, I will go and I will collect the questions here. It's the first day. It's the first day. I was hoping for one, but I got it in the response right here. So I like that talking about basketball. So let's see what people are talking about here. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, MSU, the transfer portal, the defense adjusting. Basketball scrimmage, basketball coverage, those are the things that are being discussed there on the board. And if you've ever thought about getting in there, now's a great time. You get a free trial, free trial for rivals. You go to Michigan.rivals, promo code go blue 30. You get 30 free days and, and check it out. Everything that's going on up to the second in football recruiting. You go to those uh the community with the message boards and people are, uh, are swapping paint every minute about what's going on up to the second with Michigan football, basketball, hockey, and the rest. 
I'm excited to be there. So you go to Michigan.rivals in that promo code one more time. Go blue 30. Just remember Dax Hill. Dax Hill 30. Yeah. Yes. Go blue Dax Hill, but go blue 30. That's the promo code. All right. I, I think that's everything here as we go through it. Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow at uh, one o'clock to talk about what has happened over the last uh, 24 hours. And thanks for listening. And I will talk at you tomorrow. See ya.